What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of The Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 29. And we start today's episode off with our second managerial job offer of the series. Yes, after last season, Leicester said they wanted me to take charge at the King Power. Atalanta said, why don't you come to Italy and try your hand with us right now? They're in eighth place in this area, rock bottom and pointless in their Champions League group though. And it was an interesting offer, there's no doubt about it, but I did decide to reject it. Now, I mentioned last season, I mentioned at the very start of this series, in this save, I'm more than happy to move teams and do a journeyman type of career mode. This is our third season of this series so far, but if I'm going to jump ship, I want it to go to a team which kind of feels right for me and for the project as well. Atalanta and obviously last season with Leicester struggling as well. Just didn't think they were right to offers for me, especially with what we're building with Burnley right now. We won them the FA Cup last year. We're in the Europa League for the first time ever. We're making our team younger. We're gelling. We're growing really, really nicely right now. And I just didn't feel like abandoning the project with Burnley as things stand right now. Who knows, in a year's time, in two years' time, in three years' time, maybe, just maybe, we'd have reached a natural conclusion with Burnley and would be ready to leave Turf Moor and go elsewhere or if a big enough club came in with an offer I simply could not turn down maybe one of the big six the traditional big six in England for example I'd consider it but for now we say to Atalanta thanks very much but I'm staying here in England Still for the first game of today's episode, you saw our fixtures here coming in October. We will take on RB Salzburg in match day four in the Europa League. We're heading into this game, one win would mean we would qualify for the knockout stage with two games to go. So I did rotate a lot on my side heading into the match, although it was still a relatively uh, strong lineup. And uh, heading into the game, we saw some bad news in the first 15 minutes. He's just come back from the injury he got at the start of the season, and Dwight McNeil went down once again. So frustrating but I like it realistic and challenging as well with seven minutes to go in the first half after Nick Pope bailed me out early on Aaron Conley our top scorer in Europe gets another one and gives us the lead to put us in front 45 minutes in though on a stroke of half time RB Salzburg would find a leveler and no less than they deserved as well right now winless in the group but back on level terms there they were looking very ferocious when coming forward but 12 minutes after the restart Conley outpaces the entire RB Salzburg back line runs through one on one and drills it into the back of the net he's our top scorer in all competitions this season most of his goals have fell in at the Europa League and as things stand he's the top scorer in the Europa League as well. So he restores our lead, puts us back in front with his brace, and there were 14 minutes to go. Bang! What a blasting effort from Robbie Brady to make it 3-1. And obviously Brady doesn't play much in this team, but with the injuries we've seen to McNeil this season, you know, he's, he's going to get a bit more game time, especially with the European football. Since season one, he's been nothing but a squad player, but he's not really put a foot wrong to start the campaign off, and of course he's just come back from that injury as well. So that will do it then. We have indeed qualified with two games to spare, four wins from four, 100% record. And, you know, when a group was drawn, you know, at times when groups are drawn in Europe for me, I'm kind of like, oh, that could be a little bit of a tricky one. But I felt very confident indeed of getting through that group and probably as group winners as well. We haven't guaranteed top spot yet, but if we avoid defeat to AZ Alkmaar on match day six, or if we win the following game against Standard Liège at home, that will guarantee top spot. So two draws or just avoid defeat on the final group game or win one of the two games and we will qualify as group winners. Basically, it's looking incredibly unlikely now. We'll drop to second. The qualification is already guaranteed and in the bag. You would have seen as well Dwight McNeil's injury, a broken toe. So he had two months out of the season at the start of the campaign. Now he's going to be out for three months and we won't see him again into the, until the new year. Dwight McNeil has been brilliant since the save began. He's had major interest from European clubs, but this season, two big injuries. So frustrating indeed for our winger. And for the following game here, Sheffield United, the Blades coming to take on here at Turf Moor, back in the Premier League after the promotion from last season, facing us here at home and heading into the game, rock bottom of the table. Felt very confident of making it back-to-back -back wins here and getting ourselves back on track in the Premier League after our thrashing away at Spurs in our last league game. And after we took the lead for Aaron Connolly, Tyrese Campbell made it 2-0. And I've mentioned before, I really like the next-gen last-minute or late-goal celebrations, you see. 
but sometimes they can break immersion just a little bit because they're a little bit too over the top and over exaggerated. You know, we 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 all were goal up. Like we've been dominating for the entire game. We're in complete control. I don't think the Blazers are even having a shot on Nick Pope's goal in the entire game. When Campbell made it 2-0. Look, it's the clincher. It's the closer. Reese Nelson added the third in stoppage time, which is nice to see as well. But you know, the, the goal wasn't like a last minute winner in an FA Cup semi-final. It was sort of like, yep, yeah, well that confirms it, then the game's over. The celebration's a little bit too dramatic. And like I said earlier, you know, I I really like them and I think they're a great addition by EA as well. I'm very happy to see them in the game. They do look really Really, really cool indeed but they need to be more situation based in games like that I don't think they're warranted I don't think Nick Pope is going to collapse to his knees you know when we go tune it up on rock bottom Sheffield United in a game where we've been in complete control anyway but even so it's still a nice addition from EA it just needs to be a little bit more sp uh, situation specific uh, hopefully from next year it will be um, still with the third game, Oz days so Crystal Palace away at Selhurst Park, taking them on here. I really wish that in, uh, in future versions of FIFA career mode you would see um, the AI managers, the real managers that have their face scans, uh, they get removed midway through the season if they've been replaced or decided to retire or resign in real life. Because as you can see here after Aaron Conley gave us the lead, Roy Hodgson is still on the touchline. He's already announced he's gone. He's had his final season at Crystal Palace, but he's still there on the touchline right now. Uh, kind of does again break the immersion a little bit, but I guess it could be quite hard for EA to implement that. But anyway, uh, drew the game 1-1 one, one there. Lucas and Metch are firing a late leveler for the hosts in that one. So frustrating as well. It was one of those games where both goalkeepers made some good saves in the first half, but after we got the goal and got in front, I could have had a second in the second half. Really could have put the, uh, put the sword to Crystal Palace. Just eased my foot off the gas pedal a little bit, and in the end I was punished for that passive play for a Metch scoring that late leveler. So 1-1 one, one there in London, and for our following game here, Standard Liège in our fourth or sixth game today. And again, this was the game where we guarantee top spot in the Europa League with a win or if AZ Alkmaar failed to match a draw uh, sorry, failed to win themselves uh, on their match day 5 against RB Salzburg. We actually fell behind to the Belgians though, standard the age giving them a shock lead but even though we were trailing, I still felt very confident we'd get back in the game at some point and we would just 24 minutes in, their goal was cancelled out uh, Josh Brownhill with the goal and getting us back on level terms and then 9 minutes after the restart he turns provider to find Callum Wilson who quickly offloads to Brian and Buemo and I tell you the Belgians are sick of this guy, he scored the goal of the season against them on match day one. That's his third goal against them in two games. And Bueno completes the turnaround, and that would do it. Final score of Burnley 2, Stanley H1. So we maintain our 100% record, and even though he's at Altmar, beat RB Salzburg in Austria, that does mean there's a five point gap heading into match day six. So when we take on the Dutch side away from home in the final group game, even if we lose, we've already guaranteed top spot. So delighted with that because that's exactly what I wanted. I didn't want us to be needing a result on match day five or match day six. We don't now. I can throw out a complete backup side away in the Netherlands. Won't matter one bit what the result is. We've guaranteed top spot. Still for the penultimate game of today's episode, Arteta's Arsenal coming to take us on here at Turf Moor. And I love this from Aaron Conley as well. Outpaces Gerard Piquet and mocks the old man with the celebration as he makes it 1-0. And then right before the break, we go two goals up as well. Nathaniel Shalova, I believe, getting his first goal for the club since signing from Watford. Now, as we know, Ben Mee is now in his 30s. He's beginning to decrease in overall rating as well. It won't be long before he's phased onto the bench. Shalova's been growing relatively nicely in the background. I wouldn't be against making him our starting centre half alongside James Tarkowski for next season. He headed in our second goal. Conley got injured uh, to, uh, in, the, in the second half, though, and he sprained his knee, so he's going to be out for four weeks. So another player going into the treatment room for an extended period of time. What a shame as well. Five goals in 14 games in the Premier League. Great start in the league, but in the Europa League, that's where Conley is excelling right now. Six goals in four group stage games. Top scorer in Europe right now. I'm just glad to know he'll be back for whenever our round of 32 title will be next yeah next calendar year but uh, yeah tuna win there we increase the pressure on Arteta as Arsenal right now are struggling in mid-table this season to start the campaign off for our final game of today's episode final one of November I think I said, I think I said October earlier final game of November here taking on Brighton uh, newly promoted to the Premier League they've had a fantastic start to the league from the start of the campaign they won their first five games they've fallen off the pace a little bit but still a great uh, return to the Premier League for Graham Potter side here so taking on the South Coast I wasn't even surprised 
realised we were 2-0 down at the break. They've been looking one of the surprise packages this season. And as they went 2-0 up at half time, we were in deep trouble. So in the second half, we needed to return and we needed to respond. And nine minutes after the restart, we get back in the game. Matthew Longstaff, the former Magpie, getting us back in and making it 2-1 after connecting with Callum Wilson's through ball as the former Newcastle players linked up for the goal to get back in the game. So deficit half, then six minutes afterwards, a chance to level it from two goals down. Great storming run by Brian and Buemo. And as Robbie Brady spots Antoine Semenyo, my word, what a finish under pressure by our number 27. This was incredible, man. I couldn't believe I squeezed in from this tight of an angle. The ball's going out for a goal kick, and he somehow, somehow, with the weaker left foot, squeezes it through the legs of Matty Ryan and into the far corner. What a finish from Semenyo for his first in the Premier League and our second. So from 2-0 down to 2-2, Brighton went from being in complete control to shaking to nervous under immense pressure and 69 minutes in Semenyo turns provider for Jack Stacey's first goal in a Burnley shirt first ever signing the series ever present now being rotated with Jaden Bogle in that right back role but his first goal for Burnley and what a time to get it as well completes the turnaround one of my favorite comeback wins of this series Brighton 2 Burnley 3 what a turnaround on the south coast so up to sixth place in the table 27 points on the board, really decent run from Burnley, and three points off fifth place as well. We've really turned it around since the start of the season. I want to say this episode of the Reader's Decree, my guys, thank you for watching. Really hope you enjoyed If you had, then please drop a like, my sub to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of the Realistic CM very soon.